Hello, everybody. This is James Tierney from Tierney Education coming at you with a video for an intermediate microeconomics class. I got this question today via text message because a couple of students that I'm working with have an exam tonight. And they're asking how to find the demand function for a standard Cobb Douglas utility function. So let's go over this. If we have the utility function, a standard utility function with x and y as our inputs, if it's Cobb Douglas, we have x raised to some variable, let's call this alpha, and y raised to beta. So we're looking for a demand function, meaning let's go ahead and try and figure out how much x is wanted and how much y is wanted. We're going to look at both of those. And in fact, for a Cobb-Douglas, x is going to be a function of income, m, which we'll define here in a second, and also the price of x. And then y will be m, but price of y. So we have this utility function. We also have a budget constraint always, which is px times x plus py times y equals my income. And we talk about this rule for maximization, this rule that is covered in a, uh, a different video. And we know for a standard Cobb-Douglas, it's always going to come out to be alpha over beta, y over x, equals px over py. Now as a side note, this happens when you take the marginal utility of x over the price of x and set that equal to the marginal utility of y over the price of y. You could really get into the theory about, you know, having mux over muy has to equal p of x over p of y where we have our MRS equaling our MRT, dot, 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 dot. We can get into all that theory, and you should if you're really deeply trying to learn. But if you're, you know, studying for an exam, if you're understanding what the rule is, it's going to be, it's going to be good. So if I have this information, we're really just going to have three steps to find the demand curve. The first is going to be solve our optimization rule, right? Solve our rule for Y. Okay, I want you to take that as your first step. So if I have alpha y over beta x equals to px over py, I'm just going to solve this. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. I'm going to solve this for y. I'm going to multiply both sides by x beta. So notice this x beta is going to cancel on the left. I'm going to be left with alpha y equals, I'm going to put beta out front, beta px times x over py, and then I'm going to divide this side by alpha, meaning I'm going to multiply this side by 1 over alpha. I'm going to get left with y equals beta over alpha px over py times x. So that's the first step. I solved our rule for y. Our next step, step number two, is going to be plug that into the budget constraint. Px times x plus py times y, and we just solved for y. We have beta px over alpha py times x equals m. And then my step three is going to be solve this one for x, which will be the demand curve. So x as a function of m and px. I'll bring this over slightly to the left so we have some room to do that right here. So what do I notice? Well, if I'm given px times x plus py times beta px in the top, alpha py in the bottom, times x equals m, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this py in the denominator. Those are going to cancel. And I want to get rid of that alpha, so I'm going to multiply everything by alpha. So what am I left with? Alpha px times x plus beta px times x equals alpha m. 
Let's go ahead and factor out this XPX. We're left with alpha plus beta equals alpha M. And then we'll divide both sides by PX, alpha plus beta, PX, alpha plus beta. And what are we left with? We're left with my X star or my demand function, right? It's going to be a function of PX and M. It's going to equal alpha M over alpha plus beta px. So this right here will always be, for a standard Cobb-Douglas, your x star, meaning the optimal level of x that someone will choose. Let me shift everything up slightly. I'm just going to write out what the y, my demand for y, what that function would be. Right, It's going to be py instead and m. And it's going to be beta m over alpha plus beta times py. And you can go ahead and do the math out on this yourself. You can leave me a comment if you, if you need me to do that math out. But here, we're going to see exactly what my x star and y star will be, no matter what the rest of the numbers are. So if I have a standard Cobb-Douglas utility function, right, with x to the alpha, y to the beta, we know that our demand function for x and y will always be these two things down here on the right. My x star, the optimal level of x, is going to be alpha times m in the numerator, alpha plus beta times p in the denominator, whereas my optimal level of y, my demand curve for y, is going to be beta times m all over alpha plus beta times py. I hope this helps out with figuring out how to find the demand functions. The next thing I'll do is I'll use these demand functions for a standard Cobb-Douglas utility function to find our indirect utility function. As always, please like this video, share it with those who you know are in microeconomics classes that may be struggling, and subscribe to the page as I'm hoping to start updating more as we go into the year 2025. Have a good one. Good luck.